So this is at the time, 2009, we also estimate this kind of things. I don't want to elaborate everything. So one thing is, these are the really important things. Intervention to slow the progression of security, glycemic control. We repeatedly telling you glycemic control, PP control, protein restriction, lipid lowering, weight reduction, anemia, treatment smoking. At that time, the Professor Kintri also mentioned that you have to apply to prevent acute reduction of EGFR, just like all the things. She already mentioned everything. So this is a summary. If you see, you start rust blogger, and you do the rust blogger, and you treat the hypertension. That's the one is, if EGFR is more than 45, you, use, you can use everything. You can use Meformi, you can GLB-1, RGL-2. This is the area for RGL-2. If you have a less than 30, you have a less drugs, but linaglitin can be used in every stage of the kidney diseases. So this is a good thing for the linagliptin. So another thing I would like to stress is the cardiovascular risk. In patients with the diabetes with TKD, there are many causes for cardiovascular risk. Number one, arterial hypertension, 67%. Poor glycemic control, 63%. Microalbumia, 30%. And dyslipidemia, 24%. There are a lot of, a lot of problems with the uh, CVD risks. So, in, this is the 2018 update on diabetes nephropathy co-curriculum. They mentioned four areas. Number one area is glycemic control. You have to control less than seven, according to the Professor moving out. Another problem is the blood pressure control, 140, 90, or 80. If you can tolerate it, this is already mentioned by Professor Dokkin Twin. And rust inhibitor, and then cardiovascular risk reduction. These are the four main areas to slow down the progression of the renal diseases. And the main thing is the single best evidence-based therapy for diabetes nephropathy is rust blocking medication. They really, really emphasize you use ACI or ARB to slow down the progression of the renal diseases. So I would like to, and if you look at the over 15 years, up to uh, 2000, we have uh, IDND, we have uh, Renal, we have ARB. Later on, next year, up to 19 years, there's no new treatment. Only thing see, these are the glucose, blood pressure, blah, 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 blah. But they are doing a lot of, a lot of study, but they just combine our system. That's not good. And all the lab blockage, statin, vitamin D, vitamin they are They are a lot of, a lot of doing the, some tests or some studies for the progression of the renal disease to delay. But it's not very much promising at the moment. So I would like to emphasize mainly on the, these four areas. Number one, for glycemic control, promising SGLT2 inhibitor, DPV4 and the PVA gamma, RAS blocker, ACI, and ERB, and then you should see sterling and fibrate. These are the novel agents. We don't have a ravi rubo c stirring solodinase pefibrin. These are the many, many novel agents we're using. A lot of people are coming out. Only thing we do have uh, here in our country is pental c filing and vitamin D, savalama. So these are the some uh, novel agents. It's just really, really Good, uh, uh, good data for the progression of the renal diseases. So there are the pathogenesis. I don't want to highlight everything. Only thing is, these are the ish products, sorbitol pathway, our system, growth factor. These are the four areas for pathogenesis of the DKD. So there are a lot of, a lot of drugs coming out for these four areas to prevent the AGE pathway, to block the Robidoux pathway, to reduce the OCDD stress. That, that study also show, these diagrams also show a lot of nova agent. But only thing is, at the moment is, in our country, only thing we believe is uh, Pentauci filing, Pentauci filing. So, for delaying the progression of the DKD, I would like to say A for ACI, B for blood pressure, C for cholesterol, T for diet, E for educate, 
F for fast simple sugar, G for glass of water, and the H for hemoglobin. These are the uh, already summarized standard care for target value. Metabolic control, blood pressure control, target 130-80, you use AC and ARP. Lipid control, target RDL less than 100, you use sturdy. Anemia control, I don't want to mention, but I'm in guru, I don't want to mention. Smoking, hypoglycemia awareness, low to aspirin, exercise, food care, prevention of all. These are the things you have to do for to delay the progression of the renal disease. In that case, I would like to emphasize on ACE inhibitor and the ARV. There are a lot of trials. You can see roadmap IMA2 using IV certain ID anti renal on target, all the things you can see AC and ARV are good. But if you look at two last study, altitude and Benafron D, they combine AC and ARV. But that's not the good result. More complicated and more risk for hyperkalemia. So they don't recommend combination of AC and ARV. So to summarize, the AC and ARV are good, but you use AC and ARV if patient has albuminuria. If normal density, normal albuminuria, they don't recommend AC and ARV. So mainly they are good, but if you use the AC and ARV, you check potassium, you check creatinine after two weeks. If more than 30% rise in creatinine and rise in potassium, please stop AC and ARB. The main problem with the, the, the diabetic nephropathy, they have a constriction of the afferent RDO and the constriction of the efferent RDO. Usually, AC and ARB dilate efferent RDO. Therefore, it reduces the intragromular pressure. So which one? AC or ARB? There are a lot of debates. AC is good, ARB is good. Some data show that type 1, AC is good. Type 2, ARB is good. But some data say that the same. So you are confused. Which one do you use? I would like to say most of the nephrology study are going with the ARV. Most of the cardiovascular trials are going with ACI. ACI is very good for cardiovascular, but ARV are not inferior, not superior. So I would say if you have a DKD, very high cardiovascular risk, myocardial infant angina, please use ACI. If not, you can use ARV. Don't combine ACI and ARB. If you go to blood pressure, you can target to 140-90. If you have a proteinuria, you target for 130-80. This is the only two areas, 140-90 or 130-80. If you say C in the upset, if you don't have a proteinuria, go for 140-90. If you have proteinuria, go for 130-80. There are summary of pharmacology drugs for diabetes, nephropathy. If you see ACI and ARB, they have antiproteinuria effect. They preserve the GFR, even in Taiwan or Taitu. Other drugs, nothing show that they can preserve GFR. So ACI and ARB only preserve the GFR. And, and also they have an antiproteinuria effect. So we really recommend it to use ACI or ARV if you have a security stage between the 30 to 59. There are a lot of guidelines say that go for 130, go for ACI, ARV, blah, 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 everything. So blood pressure in the CKD is different thing. Is one thing, they have an angiotensin too. They have an increased sympathetic activity. They have an increased endothelium. They have a thrombosine. They reduce the nitric oxide. They up the prostaglandin. They reduce the kinin. They increase the atrial neurotic peptide. They all lead to the constriction of the peripheral resistance and the blood pressure. One thing is they have an extracellular volume. They have a very increased cardiac output. Therefore, you have to use diuretics in DKD treatment of the blood pressure. So if you go to one thing, you can use diuretics. I would like to say diuretics are good because there's a fluid retention in DKD.
Sifam, caring for well-being.